So, this, everyone can read this? Does anyone know the backstory to this? If you're in the women's leadership group at CNN, or if you heard their presentation, you might know the story. This, is a, this came out around hour 10 of the state senator Wendy Davis's filibuster in the state of Texas. Uh, this was last year, I believe, for filibuster. Basically, the, the state senate in Texas was putting forth and reviewing a bill that would basically make it impossible for women, for women to have an abortion. And I get that this is a touchy subject, and I'm not really going to delve into it, but basically, the argument was that no, women should have control over their bodies. So when we talk about women leadership, this might have been too recent for the women in leadership group to include that in their, uh, in their video this morning, but this emerged out of this was another state senator, so Wendy Davis was a senator, she opposed it. And she started this whole movement by, where did it go? Here at the top. This. Okay, does anyone know what a filibuster is? How many of you guys are taking care of politics? One of you are. Okay. Not quite, no. A filibuster is when Someone, so a member of the legislature, either a senator or a congressman or whatever the equivalents are in your different countries, when they stand up and they talk, and they keep talking for as long as they can keep talking so that there won't be a vote. So for example, if there's a bill that you really, really disagree with, and they have to vote on it at the end of today, if you can talk until the end of today, there will be no vote. So that is the premise of a filibuster, okay? So this bill, was on the floor and it had to be voted on by midnight that day. So at the start of the day, Wendy Davis tweets, I'm gonna filibuster the bill. She had to speak for 13 hours. For 13 hours she had to be, she could not go to the bathroom, she could not drink, she could not sit down, she could not lean on anything. She had to stay on her two feet and talk the entirety of the time. Why? Because she was standing up for what she felt was the majority of Texans that were not being heard in their government, in their state government, okay? Now, to spare you the details, what ended up happening was that she ended up killing the bill, okay? So this is, this is what happens when she comes out and announces that the bill is dead. 
people from all across the city and all across the state, if they could get in, flooded the St. Paul's. Can you imagine students like our age or my age, rather, a little bit older than you guys, walking into the center of your government and basically staging a sit-in? They just sat there. And when the government said to the police, they said, you need to remove all these people, the police said, nope, <laughs> not going to happen. So you can imagine, if you're someone in government, you're about to vote on this bill, or you're trying to vote on this bill, and all you can hear in the entire building are students cheering in opposition. They didn't want the bill to pass. Okay? With the support of, so there's this hashtag that was started called Stand by Wendy, or Stand with Wendy, I think it was. <clears throat> that ended up being, I mean, it was insane. Follow, trying to follow that. It was, it was quite, quite an incredible moment. Um, there's a vine that maybe I'll show later today of the, uh, the rotunda. It's like the giant, if you guys have ever seen the U.S. Congress, it has a, that big round bit at the top. So there's one on the state legislature in Texas. And that entire rotunda was filled with students and, and people who did not like this bill. They were all just cheering. And it went viral. The entire thing went viral. And part of the reason why she knew that she could stand was because there was a community that was built, not just in Texas, but around the entire country, and I say this from someone who was living in Canada at the time, around I think large parts of the world, especially large parts of the English-speaking world, that stood with Wendy, that said that passing this kind of law in 2012 doesn't really make sense, or 2013 I think it was. 13. Doesn't make sense, it's unacceptable. So that's one example of building community using social media. I'm gonna show you a couple more examples this. Building community using social media. How many of you have seen this page? Two, three, four? Not including JIT organizers. One, two. How many of you have been to the CMS or the, the JIN Twitter page? A couple, couple more. Facebook? A couple more. Instagram? Hey, kids use Instagram a lot these days, huh? I'm starting to learn that. Maybe I should get on this. Okay. So if I use it, and I, I will presume that Instagram has the same thing. Someone correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know it. This hashtag here. The idea of a hashtag, instead of saying hashtag YOLO, or <laughs> I, yeah, I had hashtag chicken for dinner tonight. <laughs> right? Not a very productive use of um, a hashtag. Because if you were to search, for example, because all these hashtags are searchable, right? Yeah. So what's the purpose of a hashtag? You can search everything that anyone said using that hashtag on the internet, you can do so. So if you were to say, I had hashtag chicken tonight, and everyone's like, hmm, I wonder what people in the world are saying about chicken. <laughs> How informative of a debate do you think that would be? Right? How many of you here are from Venezuela? Excellent. My message goes to you guys. Okay? We're a community, this gin group. Right? Gin of the Americas. We're a big community, right? How often do we talk about what's actually happening in our own countries? With one another. Right? So, does everyone know what's happening in Venezuela right now? Has everyone spoken to someone from Venezuela about what's happening in Venezuela? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, assume that not everyone has. For example, I haven't. What is the easiest way for me to know what is happening on the ground in Caracas? I guess it was right? So do you guys see where I'm trying to go with this? Okay. When someone asks me the question, is technology good or bad, my answer is yes. Okay. If the sole purpose of our digital footprint, which is the complete record of everything we've ever done on Facebook, or everything we've ever done on Twitter, or everything we've ever done on Instagram, is I had hashtag chicken for dinner, how much are we contributing to the debate? Does anyone know the story behind Occupy Wall Street, the story behind Anonymous, the story behind um, oh, Arab, the Arab Spring? You know that story? Does anyone know how it got started? I don't know. How did it get started? Right? I don't know. How did it get started? Right. Okay. How? 4chan. Well, okay. Not quite, not quite what's going for. But it was online. <laughs> right? It was on. Yeah. Go ahead. I think that was because of the copyrights. Yeah. So. But the anonymous movement grew online. And the reason why it's important that anonymous Occupy and the Arab Spring all grew online is because there we have no limits. Or in most countries we have no limits. Okay. 
So for those of you in Venezuela where the international press has been shut down, the international media are no longer allowed inside the country. Okay? And the internet is slow. Um, no, the internet is also, slow. The internet. And also, if Cantebet, that's one of the internet companies, it doesn't allow you to open Twitter pictures. Right. Okay. So, I'll, I'll, speak for, I'll speak from my experience in China. Twitter and Facebook not allowed in China. How do kids our age get around that? No? Proxies, right? Why are proxies so big for kids our age? Because it gives us access to this. So what did Anonymous help us do, among other things? It does kind of sketchy things, but among the things that they've done, they've helped us gain access in countries like Venezuela, where you don't have access to this, gain access to this. So you can use proxies to get around it. So, if there's no national media that's telling you an unbiased story, the international press aren't allowed in. And the main internet service provider is not allowing you to access Twitter or Facebook. Are there ways you can get around to doing that? And what is the importance of getting around to doing that? Our experience, say for myself in Canada, or if you're coming from Chile, or if you're coming from the Dominican, versus the experience in Venezuela, yeah, you may be doing the same projects when it comes to your, your workshops, but your experience is very different. Some of you may not be able to go to school on a daily basis because it's not safe to. That's an experience that we should share. And that's what I'm trying to push. It's taken us four years to get to the point where JIT is now completely online. Okay? As much as these guys tried, they wanted a completely paperless conference. And in order to do that, they needed to build an online infrastructure. Okay? What does this tell us? So this now is a living record of everything we have done at this conference. Every presentation you guys went to, every presentation you guys did, most of the stuff that you said is online. Which means that when you go back to your home schools, and you know what, say only 12 of you came here, the rest of the school can now access everything that we said. The Jin community is a very unique community because we all come from, yes, the same region, but we have individual and very unique backgrounds. One of the things that I'm trying to help you guys understand, and I'm trying to understand myself, is I, yes, I mean, I, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook a lot, but I still don't know the full extent of it. What I'm trying to help you guys understand is that there is more to Facebook and to Twitter than Instagramming what you had for dinner. Okay? I'll give you personal examples. The closest I got to building community using, back then Facebook was the big deal. Uh, no, not quite that old. For those of you that were on my panel yesterday, I talked to you about this photo shoot that we did. Okay, and one of the things that was really important to the success of this was that everything went online. If you go to Facebook, if you just go facebook.com slash inspired MTA, you have full access to all these pictures. Okay. This, for example, was a poster we made. Okay. Now, she was a varsity athlete on the soccer team. He just not cuddly, right? That was what we. Were. So we're going for something that's striking. Okay. So we went for this, and it would be a lot easier for us. Okay. These are rugby players. We made a poster of them. Be the change, right? Now, imagine the impact on their teammates when. He was the captain, he was the vice captain, he was one of the star players. Imagine the impact on teammates when you have these three guys involved in building community. Because what did I say? I said that we wanted the community together to sponsor 100 children. So if the leaders in your community are all on board, then the chances are that, you know what, people are going to pay attention. I'll just cycle through more pictures. This was a receiver on the football team. These guys were, this is the, this is the first photo we ever had, uh, the first photo that went mainstream, it's still a cover photo for the page, we haven't really done much for the page since I graduated, but these guys are all, they're all in the same year, they all play soccer, uh, they ended up being, especially in the last year, we used them a lot because once this get inspired, right, we came to that often. Here, this is just some other stuff, some other athletes, as I said. Basketball, basketball. So again, when you've got the star center, you're two guys. 
So this is the ball, she said this, inspiration is contagious. I'm going to leave it on that one, just so nothing else pops up, but leave it on that one. And um, how much more time do I have? 10 minutes? 5 minutes? 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll leave it this one because, I don't know, that, that, that stood out to me. That stood out to me because the inspiration is contagious. Um, and there's a way that I, I mean, it, you guys all have different projects, and if you guys want your projects to succeed, one of the first things you have to do is build community. I wrote, I did that, everything I say about grassroots soccer, that was at the heart of that. If, in order for that project to be a success, we needed to build a community. I wrote that in my thesis. I said, if we want sustainability to be important at Mount Allison, if we want Mount Allison to be a leader in sustainability, we need to build a community. It's one of the things I've actually noticed. I'm, it's kind of disappointing that there aren't more CMS students here, but um, I understand why. Uh, but CMS, for example, I was very happy to be coming here and presenting to them the stuff that I was writing because the sense that I got from them, and most of it was online, was that there was a community here and that there was a fundamental dedication to sustainability that was at the heart of that community. Now, sustainability may not necessarily be the primary topic, but for example, like have you guys, I mean the Venezuelan students, are you guys all from different schools? Yeah. We're in two different schools. Two different schools. Have you guys had a chance to talk about your experiences? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. yeah? Okay. We presented on that. Right? There's a community there, right? There's a shared experience there. And that's what I'm trying to get at with all the stuff online, is that this idea of, and, and MJ talked about it this morning, this idea of you're 90 or what, you guys are all under 18, I think, yeah? Under 18, so you're, you're younger than 18, or you get to my age, you're 22, and, and what, is, what does Jean-Francois Richard say? You have 30 years to rebuild the entire world. Great. Like, thanks. Because I don't have a billion other things I gotta worry about, right? This idea of being alone and thinking you're alone and you're the only one who can do that, or it's just a group, like the six of you, you're the only ones who know what's going on, and you're the only ones who, who think you can do anything. There are a lot of people out there. And so when I say that we got to get online, I don't just mean, I mean, yeah, use Facebook to chat with your friends. It's great. I mean, I do it all the time. The reason I'm so. Um, I don't actually know what you saw. I mean, that was too much, but. Um, but the, the, there's also a certain, there's something else that you can do with that, and there's, there's a certain power in being able to speak to someone directly. To be able to say, you know, there's an odd chance that the president of the Dominican, for example, for those of you who know about that selfie, there's a good chance that he's seen it, right? And there's a good chance that if you were to tweet it to him, he will retweet it. There's a good chance that if you tweet at your mayor, if he is online, he may reply to you. And as young people, there is nothing more frustrating than having to email or call the mayor's office and be like, is there a chance maybe in the next year or two I can get a meeting with you? Whereas online, I say, you know what? I don't need your assistant. I don't need your team. I don't need to wait. This is public. If you say, ask, you know, when, when people have that ask me anything, the most dangerous thing you can do as a public official who goes onto Reddit and has, a, has an AMA is, be, is not, or is, not be prepared to add, answer everything that comes your way. So as young leaders, or as young people, we have that opportunity where we can say, you know what, if they're going to have one of those Ask Rob 
questions on, on Twitter, everything that you tweet is online, it's public. So if you ask me, you know what, why did you do this and not this and I don't answer you and it's a big issue, like for example, why did you say that, or I don't know, I can't think of something. But you know, say, say I made like a really bad decision, I said in my keynote yesterday that we should all waste as much water as possible. And I didn't, I didn't back that up. And you ask me online, say, say another young person sees that, and another young person, and another young person, and another young person. And it's being shared, this idea of we're all talking together, because I'm, I'm hesitant about how far to go with this, but the, the idea of we're not the only ones with the thoughts. So when I say, or when your teachers say, if you have a question, chances are someone else has the same question. They're actually not just, like, they're not bullshitting you. <laughs> chances are, someone else has the same question. If you have the thought, if you want to ask, for example, why is no one paying attention to Venezuela and the international community? Why is, why is the Western community and the European community focused on Ukraine? That's a question you can ask, and chances are you're not the only one who's asking it. If, if you have a background from Africa and you're wondering why no one's paying attention to the CAR, chances are someone else is asking that question. If you're wondering why the UN hasn't been as effective as it could be in Haiti, chances are you're not the only one who's asking that question. And that's where I'm trying to get at with this idea of building community. So yeah, by all means, have fun on Instagram, like tweet pictures of your dinner. <laughs> Don't expect me to follow you if you do that. But, you know, you can you can use it for that. You can have your own personal persona on online. But remember that there is a way that you can take your online presence and build it. It can be more than just, hi guys, today I had a really bad day at school. Why did you have a bad day at school? Was it because you couldn't go to school? Or was it because they were protesting on the streets? And I get that this is like, this is very militant and like, you know, not every day you're going to find a protest on the streets. But this is a reality that a lot of us in this room are facing. About half of you guys in this room are facing. Right? Yeah, every day. Every day, right? But I mean, like, other countries it doesn't happen. But for example, for a while, in Canada, um, they had what was called the uh, the Maple Spring, I think is what they called it. I translated it from French. It was a bunch of students, well, a fair number of students in Quebec went on strike because they wanted to raise tuition. So what was happening in Montreal? Everyone knows Montreal, right? Like big metropolitan city, big diaspora, very economically advanced, culturally advanced. There are protests on the streets every day for a good, I don't know how long it lasted, probably, I mean, they wiped out an entire school year, so a long time. Okay, people paid attention. People took photos of these protests and posted them online. There are times when the only way that we can get the word out and to spread the truth is through these kinds of, well, not this one, but these kinds of online media. And there's a certain element of, you have a responsibility to share what is going on on the ground. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. If you guys have questions or whatever, I can happily answer them, or I can chat about whatever you guys want to talk about. If you want to share your experiences, happy to do that. We have 20 minutes. I have 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. so we're going to be a little bit more interactive than we have been so far. Um, yeah, no, okay, so this idea of responsibility, right? With, what's what's that Spider-Man quote? The um, great power comes great responsibility? Spider-Man. 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 Some of you guys need to read up on your comics. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Uncle Ben is Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's yes. yeah, it's Uncle Ben. So, great power comes great responsibility. Okay, We are the generation that, I mean, I'm pretty sure some of you guys were born as the internet was born. Same year. We are the first generation that has grown up in a world of Google. We are the first generation that intimately understands the power of Google. We have a responsibility to not just use it, but also to share it and to teach it. Okay, so if your parents don't know why you're on Twitter or why you're on Facebook, like explain it to them. It's not. It may. I mean, it may just be that you're dicking around talking to your friends, but it may just be that you know what? Facebook is the easiest way to have group chats about homework. I know schools try. How many? Of you, how many of you use Moodle? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know how teachers like oh form a group on Moodle and talk about it there. Yeah. Or, so Moodle, Moodle's like, that's where teachers put homework and yeah. stuff like that on, online. Okay. So, yeah, or WhatsApp. You, you mentioned WhatsApp. WhatsApp, yeah. WhatsApp, right? I mean, how many people know how much WhatsApp is sold for? 
19 billion US dollars. Do you know what we can buy with that? We can, we can cure hunger. We can cure AIDS with that money. You can buy two nuclear powered aircraft carriers. Do you know why? Because they're. Why aren't you making Iceland? Okay, but do you know why it was so expensive? Everyone's using it. What's important about everyone using it? Uh, it's a good it's popular. It doesn't actually get money. Advertising. Wow. It gets money for everything. Well, not really. It's powerful. Powerful. Why is it powerful? Because yeah. many people are using it. And what are we doing? By spread the the Spreading information. Controlling information. Building community. Building community. Right? I have, through WhatsApp, I have free access to all my friends in Europe that I can't text. Yeah. All I need is an internet connection. And in Canada, most places have an internet connection. I can talk to my friends from here using my phone. It's powerful. All right, I'm gonna stop there because I've run out of things to say. So your turn. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I'm gonna do your own Twitter. No, you use it. Okay. So those of you that put your hand up, let me do it like this. Why like this? Everyone put their hand up like this. I want to yes. hear from all of you. We have a Twitter account that I'm using. Why not? Twitter is not popular here. It's not popular here? No, no it, it is. is. It is. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's I, just like to see what famous people talk about. Okay. Yeah, it's like, and like, uh, like me and like many people, like, they have one, they have it in their phone. They just like simply never tweet or like don't check it as often. And why don't you tweet? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you have to, I'm just no, yeah, saying. I, mean, I, I don't have nothing interesting to say at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, kind of, it's kind of switched to other social media. Okay, like what? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Instagram. Okay, talk to me about why Instagram's popular. Pictures. 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 Because people pictures. Okay. pictures. Now, when you guys say pictures, like, are you posting selfies? Yeah. Are you guys yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so why? why? Instagram, Instagram, you can create, like, accounts, like, for example, like Jay, Eddie's, and all this stuff, and you can follow them. And you see what they're doing. They're like, you guys know that you can do that with Twitter as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, more visual. visual. Like, get more visual. Okay. So, for people that post pictures, why do you post pictures? You want so people can see. Okay. What do you What do you share? Yeah. What's happening in my life? Yeah, we can also get informed. Like yeah. things in Venezuela, they're all in Instagram. That's what it's okay. Okay. Pictures with a thousand words. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Most people do it because they want people to think their life is interesting. Okay. And why is that? So that people will follow them. Okay. Okay. And why is that? So that people will follow them and like their pictures because they're interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think people just want likes. Like if you get 300 likes, then you must be amazing or pretty. pretty. Okay, so there's an innate, there's, <laughs> no, there's, seriously. there's, an, there's an internal sense of we want other people to like, uh, like, 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 yeah. right? To, to be connected with other people. Yeah. The sense of <laughs> if we post a picture and there are no likes, we feel incomplete because. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 but if in one hour I have sixty likes, I'll erase it. Okay, right. But I see. I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this, right? Why do we put pictures up? Because we want other people to recognize us. Okay. This is, we 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 want not to feel alone in the world. Okay. If we don't have sixty likes in the first hour, we take it down. Why? Because we feel alone in the world. We feel like we feel like we shared a part of ourselves, and no one else, and nobody cares. And nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. No, no, like okay, this, this, this is a laughing matter, you know. Like it's. Look at that really depressing. I'm I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to hit home a point. Okay. <laughs> but no, for like, why do you take it down? It's because no one's responding, no one's engaging, no one's reacting, right? The easiest thing you can do to let a friend know you're still paying attention to them on Facebook is to like their profile picture, to like their status. You don't have to write to them, you don't have to say, hey, how's it going? You don't even have to interact, you don't have to say hi. It's brilliant. You can, you can tell a friend, I still care about you, I'm still, I'm still following you, I genuinely still value you as a friend. Like, single click. Uh, like, no, yeah. you, you say that, right? You say that. But 
if any of you guys are on Tumblr, if any of you guys are on Instagram, that like, if it's a random person, it means a lot. Do you think, like, are you going to have a conversation about how their day went? No. <laughs> well, okay, maybe you might, but like, <laughs> no, but like, okay, random people, I mean, if, 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 any, if every one of you guys follow me on Instagram today, how many of you are going to be talking to me about, hi, how's your day going? <laughs> What'd you get up to? <laughs> I would. Right? So you went for how long? 30 seconds. Right, 30 seconds. Okay? The hey, how's it going? I'm good, thanks, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah. End of conversation. Yeah. But, we have that connection. So, I see everything that's going on in your life, you see everything that's going on in my life. We've built a community. A sense of community, at least. I know I'm not alone. I know that, hey, if I'm going go-karting and you're going go-karting, we probably have something to talk about. Yeah. Maybe you crashed and lost the race, maybe I won the race, right? Like, there's something we can talk about. Maybe I crashed into him, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Also, like, in Twitter, there's a lot of communities, like, for, like, fan pages. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of people that, like, talk constantly about, like, um, like famous people. There's a lot of garbage on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's beautiful. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, people just get there and talk about people that they like. They're like family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're family. They're mm -hmm. like obsessed with each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. The thing also too. Yeah, go ahead. Like, what I said, what you just said about the fan page is like there's something similar on Facebook where you actually have like these groups. You can create like a page. Either it's like about for a community or. You know, for different purposes, and you can get people together. And mm -hmm. I did like many groups like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the idea is we're building groups, building families, and we're getting each other to talk to one another. I was gonna say something, and then I totally forgot. <laughs> uh, what were you gonna say? Do yes. What? Do you have MySpace? I told you I'm not old enough, man. Like, no, I, I'm not skip old enough. The stage page. On MySpace. Stage. 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 There we go. Um, the other thing, and the other thing I, I just want to talk about is that when I talk about that responsibility. Uh, as you said, there's a lot of groups where people can talk about a lot of things. There's also a lot of garbage on the internet. Yes. As many of you guys know. Okay. A lot of garbage. All the cats. A lot of, well, okay, cats aside, like, we'll leave cats aside because there's always a time and a place for a bunch of Okay, there's a certain corner of the internet that everyone, everyone kind of secretly goes to every now and then and just like, Kittens. <laughs> right? And then, and then we kind of just leave it there forever. Um, no, it's it's responsibility to speak the truth. Okay? So if you guys share someone's picture, right? Like if you're, for example, you're not in Venezuela or you're in Venezuela and you share a picture of what you think is a protest, make sure it wasn't a protest from two years ago in the streets of Cairo. Yeah. See, See you, guys, you, you guys laugh about it. What was the number one picture that went viral? Coming when, when we first heard reports about what's going on in Venezuela, it was a picture of Cairo. Oh yeah. my god, wow! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a picture of Cairo, okay? And there are many others, yeah. There are many there. others, and so it's the government was printing a, a picture of a march that was like two, three years ago because the one that they did had no follow. Mm -hmm. the, the, the easiest way to learn about Ukraine right now is to be is to follow a certain journalist, is to follow certain journalists on Twitter. Because CNN's not doing a good job, and Russia Today makes up stuff, <laughs> okay? So if you have one, a Russian-based, one, a Western-based newspaper of decently credible stature, and neither of them are telling the full picture, again, it goes back to that picture, or th that idea of, of the picture, right? We can see the streets of Moscow today protesting about Ukrainian solidarity. We can, see the, we can see the pictures. If you guys go online right now, you can see the pictures of the protests in Moscow. You can see, even though the Russian government is saying there are no Russian troops in Crimea, you can see guys wearing Russian uniforms. Like, there are pictures out there. Yeah. See that? It's like standing next to their tank going, cool. There are pictures of them out there. Like vacation in Ukraine. Well, okay, not quite. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There, there was like a group of journalists, like, you know, the Clinton Center the ex-president of Ukraine that like, he flew to Russia, mm -hmm. like he left all of his possessions, but they threw them all like into a lake. So like these group of journalists, they took all the documents and they actually like recovered them and they made a web page mm -hmm. and they uploaded like all the stuff to prove like there was corruption in the country. This is a certain, and, and so there's a certain power that you have being of that age where you understand how to use Instagram and you understand the power of Instagram. Okay? You may not admit it, you may not 
like to admit that, you know what, you kind of share your dinner because you kind of want to make other people like you. They don't like that. Or you may not want to admit that. that that's a reality. I do it as well, sometimes. <laughs> right? I mean, like, when, when you change your profile picture, you want people to like it. You want people to notice that you change your profile picture. You don't want, you know, five months go by and two people have liked your profile picture. It's like, no, I'm going to change it. So I want people to see what I'm doing. Okay? Having that power is important. If it means that sometimes you're going to have to say stuff like, say you don't like what's going on in your country. Find a way to say that so it's not just hate speech. Right? I mean, we're also at the age where if you don't like something, do you have an alternative? Okay? And if you don't have an alternative, well, maybe you can start a discussion where other people can jump in and you can build an alternative or find an alternative. All the stuff about, about NATO, I, I work at a think tank, and so I'm in, I've seen this one professor that's Ottawa-based that does a lot of work about NATO. I can tweet him now and say, hey, Steve Sandeman, what do you think about this? And he'll reply to me. And mo mo this, professors are great. Most of them will reply to you. Most journalists will reply to you. Some politicians will reply to you. It's easy access to a lot of people who are there on the ground who can tell you what is going on. Or you can tell them what is going on. So, for example, if a journalist says in Haiti, you know what, the literacy rate is 77%. You're like, ah, <laughs> no, it's actually like less than 30. You can correct them. And people will notice that. If, for example, you know, someone is saying that in Turkey there are no protests, and, well, no, you have a friend who's living in Istanbul, and yeah. he... Yes, I know there are, but say, say, say some journalist says that there are no protests, but you're like, no, I have a friend who just took a photo yesterday of some guy being shot by a water cannon. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, that picture's available on the internet of a journalist, a journalist being shot at by a water cannon. It's, you have that ability to get other people to talk, to build. So when we talk about global issues, what affects you in one place is probably affecting someone else in another place. All right, good enough? Okay. Are you trying to get rid of this? No, I'm just quickly running out of things to say about this. So I, I, I do apologize. The, the theme that was the theme that I proposed was not the one that was, that, that was not the title that was given to this workshop. And then I changed it last minute because I said, well, let's we'll scrap everything before and we'll talk about something else because this is something that's important to me. Um, it's also important because, again, I'm really happy that for the first time Jin is online. Um, and then you guys can go back and you know what you can tweet? You can... Uh, we can even tell what's going on in a different room at this conference. Um, yeah, so you guys can go back to your country and or your schools and say, this is... Um, you can go back to your, your schools and you can say, this is what I've done since Jin, or this is what I learned from Jin. Yeah. And if it's Instagram, if it's Facebook, if it's Twitter, if it's whatever, there's a community that we've built here. Everyone spent a weekend slaving away, listening to a whole bunch of people. We all ate the same food. We all sat in the same classroom. <laughs> you listen to me talk for a lot. This is the most I've ever talked at a Jin conference, my god. Um, Okay, so share what you learned. Did you like something? Did you not like something? Help the people who organized the Gin Conference to build the conference and make it better for you. If something was, you know, if you were like, we need to have, next year, we need to have an entire session or an entire panel dedicated to the use of social media, because that's a big way that we communicate and we understand global issues, that should be right here. And then the people who are organizing next year's conference, the students who are organizing next year's conference, pick up on it. They're like, oh yeah, I forget, we speak this language. Because you have to remember that Richard wrote the book, the man grew up in a different era. Linda, I love her dearly, but grew up in a different era. Your teachers, you love them dearly, they grew up in a different era, some of them. Okay? They may not speak the same language that we do. They may not understand global issues in the same way that we do. So conferences are great, but unless we can engage with one another afterwards, what are we doing here? Right? There's no
nothing to show in a week's time, in two weeks' time, in a month's time. And that's the challenge that I'm going to leave to you guys. Do I want to know what that is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not allowed to release you guys early, but I'm really hungry. Um, how long do we have left? I'm happy. I'm okay. I'm happy now. We can turn this off. I'm happy to chat. There's a new one. There's a new one. What's the new one? What's the new one? We haven't seen the one. Ah, the new one. <laughs> okay, hang on. Before I finish then. Yeah, that's not Okay, that works too. <laughs> These two, right? What is this saying? I did it. You saying you did it. Yeah. What's it also saying? So who's in this photo? You. Me. So you can tag me. Right? This is also not the right one, it's just CMSJ. Just FYI. Okay? But also you could say, look, we're learning about social media more. Social media impacts the way that we learn about global issues. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> right? So there's, there's a certain element of, yes, just tweeting a picture is great, and this is great, but why? Right? This is really flattering for me, it makes me feel good. <laughs> but why? So at your at your host school, for example, when you go back, and someone asks you, why did you do this? Do you have an answer? Because he inspired us and made us... Right. Inspiration. Inspiration. There you go, right? Like that could, that, that could be like a uh, caption. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get you guys to get into the habit of is that this is really cool. Like they're going to show it probably at the end. But we could do more with just this as well. There's, there's, there's one more step, two more steps we can, we can do with this. And so while you guys may be at this level right now, maybe we can be at, well, most of these photos are fine, but maybe we can be at another level where it's like, you know what? I was convinced that we need, or Jin needs to start using social media because that is the way we're gonna understand global issues in the 21st century. And that's a powerful, powerful message. 140 characters, not very long. Mine actually has a location also. Does it? Even yeah. better. Location. Okay. Okay. Everything's off now. It's off.